Hey Soul and welcome back to Kula Nati, your careers and workplace channel. I am your host, Khunse Hamanis Madu Mo. So we're back again with tips and things, continuing from our previous episode where we covered competency-based interviews, otherwise known as CBIs. Here's a quick recap for those who missed it. We discussed competence. We discussed the different types of interviews, structured versus unstructured. We talked about the science of interviewing. We also talked about how the successful candidate is determined, more often than not. So folks, we're really keeping the episodes nice and short so that you can watch. So make sure that you do watch back to the previous episode just to get a proper understanding of what competency-based interviews are really about. And once you have that sort of understanding, then this episode will make a lot of sense to you. So yeah, in this episode, we're really going in. Now we're talking about how to answer competency-based interviews. I'm going to start this a bit backwards in that I'm going to start by showing you real life interviews, guys. These are real life interviews, okay? Then I'm going to tell you how those, those questions were answered in order for you guys to gain an understanding of what is expected of you as the candidate. Folks, what you will witness in the next two interviews are people who are largely inexperienced, so they've either hardly worked or not worked at all. And you see how they conduct themselves in interviews, how they answer the questions, their body language, etc. Thank you for your answer. So tell me about a time when you work particularly hard to get others to accept one of your proposals or your ideas. As you well know, I am a TVET student at one of the Technicons. Part of my curriculum is carpentry, which I absolutely enjoy. I love making things. It gives me great joy. We had a project that we had to submit as our final year project, and we needed to make something that reflected all our learnings throughout the year. So I was partnered with someone. This particular individual thought that, okay, let's get this job done. Let's just make um, a set of drawers, dramatic lighting, you know, that would help people during load shading, which I thought was a good idea. But I really wanted to blow this one out the water. So I decided let's do something else. Because I spend a lot of time on YouTube, I've always had this idea that I wanted to make this baby hammock. What I did is that I put together some kind of proposal to my partner. The proposal consisted of um, the equipment that we'd require in order to make it, the time and how much the equipment would cost, that kind of detail. And I presented it to my partner. His concern was obviously where are we going to get the money to get all the stuff and how are we going to get it done and how are we going to get it delivered to school and all those things. And I said, I think that we can actually sell this thing when we're done presenting it. And that was what I needed to get him on board. So he then agreed. We went ahead and we made this hammock. It took a long time. It took a lot of dedication, a lot of time. Um, but eventually we did it. We were very satisfied with it. Our letter was so happy that he actually bought it off us. It was a really great uh, finish to an amazing project. In the example of the TVET student, you were able to pick up that this person has an investment in their career. They have an interest in what it is that they are doing and they really want to bring that across. So they don't want to just get the project done, they want to do the project well. They want to get excellent marks for the project, which is really quite telling of how this person will behave in the workplace. They're not just going to do a job just because the job was given to them. They're going to do the job well. They're going to execute it well. This is part of how you sell yourself as a candidate. It is imperative that you use every opportunity to sell yourself. What I also wanted to really show you is that even if you're an inexperienced person and you've never worked, there are answers that you can find from your university experience. You definitely have experiences that you can speak to that will convince the panel that you have sufficient experience in order to perform. Stay tuned for the next interview with another inexperienced candidate. Provide me with a situation that you were required to take responsibility not only for your own work, but the work of other people. So as part of our university curriculum, we're requested to do some group projects. Those aren't always my favorite, but uh, we do persevere. 
I was allocated a group. We there were five of us in our particular group. We got together. We allocated work. We started a WhatsApp group. All the things that you would normally do in a group project. From there, we noticed that one of our team members was not really forthcoming. I decided to request a meeting with this particular individual. We met on campus and we talked. He wasn't really forthcoming with what was really going on, and I I, I assured him that it was a safe space and that we could talk and that I really just wanted to help him out. And he started speaking to me and he told me what was going on in his personal circumstances and I was, you know, understanding and I really got what he was going through and it really made sense why it is that he wasn't, you know, really participating in the group project. What happened was that um, I assisted him to get onto this university food program and I assisted him to get uh, some counselling as well, which he was very appreciative of. And from there, we then still had the project to do. So I suggested to him that we rather meet on campus um, daily and just work on the project together. And so I helped him do his part and we did my part together and we really collaborated. And I really learned that, you know, sometimes it's just people's circumstances that hold them back. It's not always who they are or they're not in control of the situations that are happening in their lives. I made a good friend, so I was really happy about that. And we got good marks. So that was a really great experience, a great learning experience for me. So once again, in this example with the inexperienced candidate, she used the STAR method. So how did she use the STAR method again? The S was that she is doing a group project that is required for their curriculum. Often they do group project and the task was to fulfill this group project. I think you can tell by now that sometimes S and T are a little bit enmeshed and that is not an issue. I mean, when you do answer the questions, you're not going to be saying, here's my S and here's my T and my A and my R. So the whole example kind of does become enmeshed, but the more prepared you are the more you're sure that you've delivered on the whole star method. The A in this example was assisting the team member firstly in order to complete the project. She also had her part to do in the project. The result was that she was fully able to assist the team member as well as get good marks for the project. What I particularly liked about this example is that this student showed a lot of care towards their team member first of all. The student also showed strong leadership skills in that she didn't do a hostile takeover after noticing that the team member wasn't pulling their weight. Instead, what she did was collaborate with this particular individual and get to the bottom of the issue. This type of, of individual is somebody that you can trust in a team environment, somebody that you can trust to deliver on what is required and to deliver it with the whole team in collaboration. The next interviews are of more experienced candidates. So they've worked a little in their career, they kind of have found their feet a little. This is not their first interview. Sometimes in our client relationships, we aren't able to give our clients everything they ask for. Please describe a time when you had to negotiate a solution with an internal or an external client. In my role as a talent acquisition consultant, my responsibility is to run with jobs or projects from beginning to end. I had a job spec that I received from line manager and it was part of what we consider to be a scarce skill at our organization and we already know that it's quite difficult to find those people on our own so I enlisted the assistance of an agency or a number of agencies rather and um, I sent them through the job spec, we went through it and I did a whole briefing with them explaining to them what it is exactly that we're looking for. Given that the fact that we hardly use agencies agencies um, at the organization that I work for. What I then did is I took it upon myself just to give them more information as to when we say in this particular organization we're looking for this particular role, what that really means to us because it isn't often market related. Consequently, I received a few CVs from the agencies that I had briefed. I was very happy with the CVs on paper. They looked really good. Um, it looked like they had the knowledge and the experience that we required. I promptly sent the CVs on to the line manager. The line manager had a look at them and we scheduled interviews. Come interview, we learned that the candidates didn't didn't quite have the knowledge and experience that it looked like they had on paper and that was quite disappointing and a lot of time had been wasted the land manager was understanding but they were not happy obviously because time 
is wasted and um, that's not ideal an ideal situation um, so I went back to the drawing board and I went back to the agencies and I you know gave them the feedback and I explained to them why it is that the candidates that we had seen did not make the cut I then um, gave them just more information as to exactly what it is that we're looking for once again from there I learned a lesson that you know as much as you receive good CVs from agencies it is important to still do the screening um, of those candidates and make sure that they do meet the requirements of the role from your perspective as well and not just from the agency perspective so what I requested from the agencies and the next um, CVs that they, they sent is that I would have a telephonic screening with the candidates which they agreed to do um, in the telephonic screening I went through everything in terms of the role and what we were really looking for and I was confident myself that these people would be able to do the job and so that's how I was able to then uh, remedy the situation. The line manager was eventually quite happy candidates were then placed in, in the role. So further to the learnings um, of uh, that I learned from this particular experience I then also took it upon myself to start an initiative where our organization meets with agencies on a quarterly basis and we basically tell them what's going on what's new in our organization and we tell them a little bit more about our roles and our different uh, parts of the organization what it is that we do it's the knowledge sharing um, opportunity really for them to learn our business because the better they know our business the better they're able to service us so that was one of um, the things that I learned and then took on and initiated through this experience the next question posed to our experienced candidate is tell me about a time when things didn't go according to plan and how you dealt with that. If I may first provide you with some background, I work in a team of three. It is a training manager, the training facilitator, and myself as the training consultant. Our responsibility or part of our responsibility is to conduct training on a weekly basis and it's organization-wide training. Anyone is open to attend. If they are available and um, are interested in the particular topic that we are covering, they are welcome to attend um, the training. So on one particular Friday, we learned that the training facilitator was unfortunately off ill and obviously not able to then attend work and not able to conduct the training. I promptly went up to the line manager and I suggested that I am very confident in the material that she would have been training on and I am confident in my ability to conduct the training as well. To which she suggested that we do a mock preparation. I was very ha happy to do so. I did that and she gave me a thumbs up and I went ahead and I did the training because we request feedback from our attendees I was immediately able to see the feedback that I received and it was um, a 4 out of 5 which was quite sterling for a first time I was very proud of myself and so was my manager I really attribute my knowledge of the material to the fact that I assist in putting it together first of all and because I take a keen interest in what my colleagues are busy with and what they are involved in in the small team we, that's a great advantage the other reason why I think that I was very confident in my ability to go ahead and give the training is because I am part of Toastmasters International. I have learned how to speak publicly and that's a great advantage that has added quite a bit to my career. In this example, peeps, this candidate really did a good job at selling themselves. But first, let's discuss the star method that they used. So in this example, S really stood for the fact that their team is required to do training. The training facilitator was not available on this particular day. So that was kind of what the situation was. And the task at hand was that she then had to deliver the training. What I wanted to bring across in this particular interview is that it is not perfect life experiences that make for good candidates, but rather how candidates navigate situations that may have not been favorable towards them. This candidate comes across as quite confident, especially in the use of language, where she says she promptly went up to the line manager to suggest that she would be in a position to conduct the training. You'll notice that the candidate used the opportunity to mention that she is part of Toastmasters International. And this really says to the panel that she is somebody who is invested in her career, even outside of the workplace. The chance of her Toastmasters International membership coming up later on in the interview or her being asked directly about it may not have happened. 
So it was very wise of her to throw it into the interview at this particular point. So I did mention that I am kind of flipping the script on this one and showing you the interviews before I explain the particular method used to answer the interview questions. The method that was used is the STAR method. STAR is an acronym that stands for Situation, Task, Action and Result. Now I know as much as anybody else that interviews are quite nerve-wracking. So to sit there in an interview and think about did I mention the S? Did I mention the T? Did I mention the A or the R? Can be quite a bit of a challenge. My invitation to you is to practice the STAR method before the interview. So while you're in the interview, there won't be a need for you to consider or think about whether or not you've used all the parts of the acronym. This episode, it was less about each of the answers that the, each of the candidates gave. It was more about how they answered the question. So let me explain the STAR method that was used. So when you think S, think about when, who, what, where. All of those kinds of questions need to be answered in this particular part of the acronym. When you think about T, it is about what your particular task was, what your contribution to this particular situation was. A stands for action. Now this is the fun part. This is where you talk about what you chose to do. You're presented with the opportunity to use your words and use your language well in this particular part of the acronym. So use words like I took the initiative. My leadership skills allowed me to face this challenge in this particular way. Because of my dedication to my role, I was able to. Note how much power those words hold, how much weight they hold. When it comes to results, which honestly is one of the parts that people mostly forget when being interviewed, this is your opportunity to share the outcome of the situation, sharing specifically what your contribution was to the situation. In your response to R, make sure to include answers to questions such as what did you accomplish what did you learn what impact did your action make <sighs> wow that took quite a bit to make but you're all worth it i hope that you learned quite a bit and will be incorporating the star method into your next interview thank you so much for watching we appreciate each and every one of you next on kula Nati, we will be discussing those common mistakes that candidates tend to make during interviews. We will also talk about how to answer those questions that have you wondering, who am I again? It's been real. Thank you so much for your time. Remember to subscribe so that you're first in line when we put up new episodes. With that, I'm Khonse Hemanis Nadu. Bye.